Luca's team is out, so he's out. That's it. I don't know why you two are still here then, but your guys was out a full round ago. Look, yeah. all is all is <laughs> right in the world again, folks. The smelly leafs are out. My jets are out. The Oilers are out. No Canadian teams are left. Dude, is that all is right in the world? What? Oh, all is. I guess you're just saying it's like a fate. Um, it's, we have to accept. It's not what I want, but like yeah. it's just here we are again. Like nothing's changing. Thanks, Gary. No, I'm kidding. I don't understand how people actually like blame Gary Bettman for there not being a cup in Canada. Yeah, well, we'll get to that later on in uh, Don't Think, Just Tweet. Believe me. Oh, yeah. uh, but for today, we thought it'd be fun because I feel like you know these guys. Are, well, you're going to be angry about the Leafs. We could have done that, but it's days later. If you want to get angry at some point during here, go ahead. But uh, we don't need the full breakdown, except we're still going to get a piece of a breakdown here in what we're doing today because we're looking at... Some of the most humorous, as well as just some of the most outlandish, but also some interesting trades that people are making on Cap Friendly. This is all as a result of their teams being eliminated. Some of these might actually be yours, and you just haven't told us. No, no, you know, you guys know I'm not a big trade guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love trades, not from the Leafs, though, usually. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's a big keep the, guy's the core a, together. Guy's a huge Cap Friendly guy. <laughs> huge Cap Friendly the guy. Which is, again, the idea comes from... Uh, <laughs> hours. <laughs> hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a loser, right? Is that what you <laughs> Um, I have a life. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from Corwin going around, and I guess he did something for DSC with this. Uh, yeah, we, we thought it'd be fun to do here. We're just taking a look at some outlandish trades and some ones that will actually spark some kind of Cause, discussion. Because my through. thing is, like, you can you can see people on Twitter, like, will share a bunch of random trades that uh, they're like, oh, just trade McDavid and uh, Dreisaitl for Marner and Matthews and just, like, swap it and see what happens, which would be funny, but... The whole thing with this is like cap friendly. You got to make the cap yeah. work, right? Like yeah. that's the yeah. whole part of it, and that's why uh, one of the things that I thought was hilarious is that pretty much every single Oilers fan that makes one of these trades Kyler Yamamoto, like Yamamoto, <laughs> Yamamoto. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, yeah, I don't know. We, we, I, we got some fun ones. I think there's some ones that are like outrageous, and it's just like absolutely not. But just in there is a joke because there's hilarious. Not even. Well, like I don't know if the person made it as a joke, but. They uh, they might be serious and just delusional, and we're gonna laugh at that. That's how there's... humor works, anyways. If it's intentional or not, if you yeah. get the laugh, you get the laugh. Yeah, uh, we love to laugh here. It Love is it. Leafs Love and it. Oilers, by the way, that we're taking a look because those are the two teams that got eliminated. Where again, they are stacked. No Jets, eh? No. Yeah, they, they, there's some Jets there are some in jets both in there. of them. Okay. 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 So, I, like, I, I got yeah. some that are, like, both of those teams traded with the Jets at some point, so we'll get your thoughts okay. on right. that. There we even, go. even though the team should probably make some trades, we all know Chevy's probably not going to do anything. What was your nickname <laughs> for him? Chevy takes days off. Or she, uh, Kevin <laughs> Shevel takes days off. I promise <laughs> the way he said it the first time, you, you hit the it delivery. Was smoother. It was smoother. You got a great yeah. laugh at it. Didn't get to laugh at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wearing my glasses. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what happened yeah, there. Yeah. Huh? These right. are so like dirt. Like, yeah, you got to clean them. Man, I, man, I do clean them, but they, they just don't clean. <laughs> <laughs> they do look like forever like dirty. I know what he's like. It's hard to see and it's hard for him to see without these. But anyways, let's start. Let's start. Uh, let's start with the Leafs one. Corwin, you were kind enough to, to come up with these, so we'll start Leafs. Not come up with. I just uh, found yes. them. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you don't want the credit for <laughs> no, that. I do not want credit uh, for these. Right. Trade. Numero uno. This one is titled Belief EK65, which I'm sure you know where this is going then. I'm a believer. In this trade, <laughs> the Maple Leafs would end up with Eric Carlson, $2 million retained by the Sharks. TJ Brody goes to the Sharks, along with William Nylander and a first and it's their one from Boston. So again, you get Eric Carlson if you're the Leafs, and you have to give up TJ Brody, Nylander, and a first. My thing for this one is personally I, I, hilarious. I think both both teams say no to this, yeah. which is like which is a very rare trade that like not even one of them is going to be happy. No. And and there's just absolutely no way it happens. I really wanted Carlson at the deadline, but like one that's a lot is it's it's a lot to give up. But then San Jose, like, what are you even doing with any that. of that exactly yeah, the like, Nylander like, part you, if, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if you sign him long term then the, the first round pick but TJ Brody you don't really need and like and the first round pick's not gonna be good if you're the like, shark if you're the sharks you want someone younger yeah. you're just like everyone you want is young TJ Brody old man rivers 
Like, holy smokes. Although Joe Pavelski has shown you it doesn't matter how old you are anyways. But it's it's cheap DJ uh, DJ Brody. TJ Brody. <laughs> not even uh, worthy of his name anymore. No, TJ no. Brody's not cheap. He's great. Yeah. He's, he, but, but he's kind of an old man, Rivers. So then and, then, and then, like, if you're the Sharks, and you probably want someone who's, like, a, an amazing prospect or someone who's really good already and is, like, 20. I just don't know if they'll get that for Carlson because the contract yeah. is still massive. Yeah. How many years does he have left? I'd guess, like, three or four. I guess I can check. So it's, an, it's just an unrealistic trade. Yeah. 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 He, his contract goes to 26, 27. So, no. Uh, yeah, here's our, our system for this. We're going to go through some of these pretty quick because some of them are an absolute joke. Just a thumbs up, thumbs down for the trade. I, absolutely not. Thumbs down. Okay. Uh, and we'll be doing that for the perspective of, you know, how about this? You can be from the perspective of the Leafs to split it, and you can be the perspective of whatever the other team okay. is. Okay. Okay. Here's one for the Oilers. Edmonton is receiving, and this is titled, Connor for Connors. Let's do it. I don't like the sound of it. <laughs> I don't right. like the sound of the rest of this. I love, by the way, this one I'm excited to show because it's like one of the Connors they include it is like, just so inconsequential. So this is a trade with Chicago, as I said. Clearly, again, this is for the first overall draft pick. Uh, that's one of the things in there. Then here's Connor Murphy, Taylor Radish, a first round from Tampa, and a second rounder from Dallas. And that's for Cody CC and Connor McDavid. So I say it one more time? <laughs> so the picks involved is the Bedard pick. Okay. A first rounder from Tampa Bay for 2024. A second rounder in 2025, Connor Murphy and Taylor Radish. And then in exchange, Chicago would get Connor McDavid and Cody CC. It's essentially yes. Connor Bedard Con- yes. and another first for Connor McDavid. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, no. what? No. Do you do that? I don't like. If you're Chicago, you probably don't do that. Oh, either. sorry. To make it work as well, uh, if I'm reading this correctly, there's the third trade involved partner is, is that right edmonton is also giving up a third round pick in kyler yamamoto is that there? <laughs> yeah they just every time Ew. uh the seattle kraken well, so I, I gotta I guess say that's, that's one of the most generous uh packages they've received back for yamamoto in the trades well, yeah. a lot of people are like him for to take him wow. like yeah it's good they just don't want him he is yeah. pretty irrelevant out there <laughs> uh, okay Trump, so from Frank, but so you've yeah. already said now I guess from Chicago's perspective, I probably would. Like, I know, I know, it's like you're excited for their first overall pick and everything, and the potential. Like, of that. I, you'd have to think about it. Like, you'd smash that. I yes, but at the same time, like, I understand that there's It'll no take time. there's there's no more exciting time for a fan than to for potential yeah. and like to be able to draft the first overall pick. He's like going to be cheap for the next three years. You have like kind of some, some excitement there. And I don't know if Connor McDavid brings that same excitement. Cause you, you know what he is. He's the best player in the league, but you know, if he's, if he's not winning on Edmonton right now, he's not winning with that Chicago roster. So like, I see what you're saying on the fun part of it. Cause it's definitely the most fun part of being a sports fan that you take for granted. Cause you're always just like stressing for wins, but where I disagree is like, nah, like it would still be fun to have Connor McDavid, but the part that would hurt is just like, yeah, he's a little bit older, obviously, already. On he, top of this, you'd have to get him to sign years. another deal. And even more so, you definitely don't have anything else around him at this point to make that a fun team to watch. Do you Aside think that Connor McDavid would actually leave? No. In two Not years? Not this scenario. In two years. In two years. Because, like, think about it. I mean, like, you already did the good faith thing. You signed a long-term deal. It's not like you just left at any opportunity. Like, you gave it a pretty solid chance. Like... You'd be mad as an Oilers fan if it happened because you'd lost a generational player. But like, yeah, I whatever. don't know. I don't know if that'll matter because Edmonton. Think about Tavares. He did that. He, he no, no. I, yeah, sorry, yeah, I think yeah. fans would be like angry at him. But I think the rest of the league looking out, no one would be like, you sharp. No, no, you. no, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. No one would blame him. But I think that there is something about the legends about getting drafted by a team, not just one team, but like, like winning, winning with the team. Winning with the team that that that, that, that drafted you, like like Crosby, Ovechkin, yeah. all, like Gretzky, all these guys, like the generational talents, all won championships with the team that drafted them. And this isn't like the NBA where players are just walking like left, right, center to win ships with other teams. It's very like, rare. It's ra- it's rare. It's yeah. rare. And and which you could see he'd care about too. I think I think McDavid would not leave Edmonton until he took care of business by winning cups there. I just but my like guess. Maybe. but maybe. so the one Drysaddle's contract's up first, right, or is his up after? So Connor McDavid's contract 
is up in 25, 26. That's the final year, sorry. So it's up the next year. Yeah. Then Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl's on such a good contract. It's right. a- absurd. Uh, his is up in 24, 25. That plays a big impact, right? Like what the team is like. I, I think he's a guy that wants to win, and if the team isn't looking good, then I, then I could, could see him moving. But I, I wouldn't imagine he's like desperate to leave Edmonton or something like that. No, no, but like, again, I think that like these great players, especially a guy like McDavid, he's so hungry, so competitive. I feel like there's just like, he knows that like to establish himself as, which is maybe not a, a proper way of looking at it but i feel like athletes kind of do feel this pressure that like if you really want to be one of the greats you got to win with the team that drafted you if there are multiple trades in here is this just someone being like here's my off season or yeah is this, uh, that's the whole thing they're, they're it's whole an off thing, season. this is their off season oh, okay that's what i was it was not a three-team trade last day it was later they were just like yamamoto get out of here that's what i mean yeah okay There's, it'll maybe be like they chance. have a whole yeah, tr- main thing that they're doing and then they'll just throw in a yamamoto yamamoto. Trade. okay well the next one for the leafs uh is i don't know if i ever actually officially said i would i would not do that as chicago either i'd see why you'd say no and why it definitely the, the reason happen. i'm saying no is just because the uncertainty of the contract and like you you're not winning in that two-year window of yes. him having yeah, a deal. Agreed. True. True. I guess at this point in time, agreed. yeah. Next one. Uh, this offseason goes as following for the Leafs, and again, uh, you got a couple roles to play because there's a bunch of teams involved, including the Jets. Uh, first oh, trade. Oh god. <laughs> uh, third round pick for Matt Murray to the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, and uh, first rounder as well. So this is just like a salary dump where you have to give away your first rounder. For that one, I, I'm saying no for the Leafs. Hopefully, just because I'm thinking like, God, you're not gonna have to give up another first for this, are you, Columbus? We'll go quick on that one. If I'm Columbus, I'm probably taking that. Why not? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Next one, uh, Toronto. They get Dylan Dubé and Noah Hannafin from the Flames. In the Flames. They get Willie Nylander. Wow. That's a very interesting trade. Well, if you're the Flames, are you are you taking it? Job's Pro- tough. Pro- huh? prob- probably. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Like, okay, that's so... Yeah, yeah, this is all gut. By the way, don't one. worry. Like, you know, like, I mean, I'm putting you guys on the spot, so don't worry. Go with your gut feeling on it more than anything. But yeah. I, for the Leafs, I, I, I wouldn't. Of the three players that will be involved in like the... Mo- well, I mean, I shouldn't say involved because maybe... You know, Matthews will be involved in no trade talk. But of the three that people want to think about trading, who's the least you'd want to trade then? Matthews? And then uh, William? Matthews, Marner, yeah. Nylander? Yeah. It really depends what kind of money they want. So let's just say he wants to be the highest paid player in the league, but it isn't the 15, but it's still highest. Matthews? Yeah. And you, st- and you get was, him long term. I think if he's trying to go above 13, you trade. I start looking. Hmm. Would you say the same? Probably. Like, Thir- no higher than 13 and a half. Well, we'll go to the next trade then. Here you go. Ah, this is the Jets. So, Lay it on me, baby. You're giving up. By the way, shout out to the Winnipeg Ice. Taking care of business right now. you cheer for them? I, I'm taking care of business oh, yeah. right there. Two right there in the WHL Championship. Best logo in, in hockey. And uh, hoping that they can meet the Peterborough Peets in yeah. the World Cup. That'd be cool. Shout out to the yeah. Peets as well. Congrats on making it to the OHL final there. Yeah, so. right now they're up 2-1 in their, uh, in their series. So Okay, so here's what you're giving up here. You're giving up Ehlers, uh, Heinola, Shifley, and Logan Stanley, which I'm sure you're fine that, with that part. Who thinks of these trades? <laughs> this is what you're getting. Marner and Lilligren, or Liliagrin. He's saying yes. He's saying yes. <laughs> Look at the smile. Okay, you got to take a couple things into account. When's Mitch's deal up? He is this year and the next one. He's probably not resigning in Winnipeg. You know, Marner loves the place. Marner's a big market kind of guy. Who are yeah, we? Who are we? Ke- who are we keeping? I didn't want to say. Is it. he? I, like, like again, I, I think that he loves guy's Toronto. in every ad I've ever seen for every. Fair. Player. He likes spot man. He's a big time player. Which he again, gets paid like a big time. Take player. it. I'm not saying that is all like what the heck. I'm pulling the trigger. <laughs> He's pulling the trigger. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Why and not? Do we have a trade? Why not? I want. I, I. I feel like I should say yes to something. I don't think this is a terrible trade because I really love Nick Ehlers. Yeah, I love it. Um, Who doesn't? I mean, you, that must have been hard for you because you like him too. I, you I, like no, him a lot. No, I, I just think this because I think that Shifley and Ehlers are not going to want to resign in Winnipeg, and Hanola. It sucks what's going on with Hanola, but. He he just like who knows maybe he'll work out for the Jets I just don't know if he will he's kind of small seems like he just can't really crack crack the roster I hope that he does but Stanley's a lost cause just like you know 
I've, I've actually met Logan Stanley a couple times. He's a nice guy, but it just seems like things aren't working out for him in Winnipeg. If I'm Toronto, I'm like, okay, like we can get a guy like Shifley who could sign long-term with us, and Ehlers would probably sign long-term with us too. Ehlers is kind of like a similar player to Nylander. Yeah. Lots of speed, and like that's a good return for the Leafs. And for I, the Jets, so you're, it's just, you're just like, getting a little as, bit more but, depth, and then again potentially with the Hainola if you're the Leafs. As the Leafs, and I'm, shedding money. As the Leafs, I'm still saying no, but mainly, honestly, it's the Lilligren part for me that like you want it's. Him. I oh, I just think you're giving up two players that have been really good for you. Like obviously, Ehlers and Shifley is really what you're trying to get back there, and maybe like a long shot on Hainola, but like. Yeah, I just don't know if that's enough of what, and especially like Shifley, I get it, but he's he's older. Like, are we trying to sign him to a long term deal? Like, he's gonna be like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we're looking for a guy that's gonna be like pushing thirty does, plus. Does Corwin 40. have NHL twenty trade logic? Lilia Grin just full interest. <laughs> he <laughs> will not give the piece up. Shifley, Shifley had forty two talks last year. Low key, yeah. pretty crazy. So yeah, how's I, the I, defensive numbers looking? Then do we look at? It? N- not, not that it's good. ever, yeah. Not, but how that <laughs> is not yeah. good defensively. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, but yeah. like you're a beauty. You're but, a beauty. You know, you, you score goals. Let's go to the next <laughs> one here for the Oilers. This one's just called "Let's Rebuild," and it's with Columbus. Which so wow, Ooh. this is perfect. Wow, you get to play GM Ooh. for two teams you love. Okay, you're giving up Kent Johnson, uh, Matei Chuck, Adam Boakvist, and three first rounders, including the, the third, third overall ball. pick this year. For Connor McDavid, flat, which is crazy because I think you still do it if you're Columbus, but like the biggest player in the league, like in your market, and like that pretty it keeps most of their current roster. Now you smash that like button. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think I think you got to do what you got to do to get McDavid. I'm like yeah. it'd be the greatest. <laughs> yeah, thing. you think? <laughs> yeah, like I like how we have man, to think man, about man. It. That's no, a no. huge package. Line is talking sixty if he's playing with McDavid. I'm just saying. <laughs> 60. I saw, didn't even I, go really? like on the high end of 50. It was like Could you imagine 60. McDavid, yeah. Goudreau, and Line together would be yeah. the best line in hockey? Columbus like, is no totally question. doing that deal. Now you're so so you're the Oilers. So in this case, sorry, actually. So you're taking that deal. Columbus, yes. Yes. You're actually the Oilers. N- no, you can never <laughs> you can never <laughs> trade sense. on me, but holy smokes, it's that's pretty a good great value. value but a great, you, still, you just don't trade them. It's great value. But Ooh. no, I mean, like look, Ken Johnson was what, a fourth overall pick? Gonna be a hell of a player. Or fifth overall pick, whatever he was, going to be a hell of a player. Probably maybe the best player in that package as of right now. Might score or, or, the most uh, Michigan's David. of all time. Yeah, exactly. This one's like, and and he he's still like nothing compared to McDavid. Yeah, like you're nothing. yeah you're smashing up your Columbus, and there's no way you're doing it if he was. But like that uh, that is a that's a lot, lot. and it's like, but again that's what he's worth. Like, it's good yeah, proposal. Yeah, it's a, not not a bad proposal. King, and Matejchuk yeah. is a really good defenseman. He's gonna he would be really solid. And then for with the third overall pick, if you can, if you're able to take like either Carlson, yeah. Carlson, Mishkov, Mishkov, like Will Smith, one of these guys, like that's that's pretty insane. It's but very speaking insane. of a that's King's ransom, angry. the Kings are involved in the next one here, and a guy we've met before, Brant Clark, Sean Dersey, uh, Gabriel Velarde, and then the second round pick from the Kings, and that's for Leon Dreisaitl. Holy smokes! If I'm the Kings, absolutely. Okay, and if you're the Oilers. I'm probably not doing that. <laughs> you know, with the playoffs he had, like, and just period of who he is. And to be fair, we think Brant Clark is going to be <laughs> Yeah, he'll be amazing. But uh, Velarde's pretty good, too. Yeah. He's it's a good year this just, year. I, how many I, years I, left I, we I, say? I, two? I like Jersey too. But if you think he's my – I mean, again, internally, if you're the Oilers and you're like, man, this guy might dip because he's going to get paid a ton in that. And, yeah. And, like, Dreisaitl, like, L.A., you're paying him. Like mm-hmm. for sure, so, he'll so get like, the money. He'll I'm, stay. And yeah. like I, I don't, I can't see guys leaving LA really. If no. they pay you, like why are you leaving? It, it it is such a disappointment that the Oilers haven't been able to get it done with like McDavid you and, 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 and Dry. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, as, you, as a GM, as a GM, I'm disappointed in myself. Okay, as the owner of the Oilers, I'm disappointed in myself for. I'd be disappointed as an Oilers fan if the owners of the Oilers was wearing a Winnipeg ice kit. Like oh this. yeah! Seriously though, yeah. it's like uh, you got you got dry set on this ridiculously reasonable contract. What's he getting paid? Less than eight, eight and a half? half? Mm-hmm. Like that's a joke. And and McDavid could even be demanding like the way he structured his contract. He could have had shorter contracts and demanded more, like kept demanding more and more on his next deals. And the fact that they just have not been able to figure it out in the crease, they have such poor depth on that team. It's honestly a joke. And, like, if Dreisaitl leaves, like, 
what are the Oilers doing? What are they going to do? Like, the, the eight and a half million, like, yes, they can get a good player with eight and a half million, but, like, they're not going to get someone nearly yeah. at but the also, same value you with that you, money. You'll never also, get that type of value ever again. Yeah. Because that's generational and, value. And, and you're right. Like, yeah. McDavid could be like, what is going on with the state of this team? Like, could you imagine back-to-back years? Get me years? to Chicago <laughs> <Could you laughs> for the first overall yeah. pick. Could you imagine in back-to-back years, the Oilers lose Dreisaitl and then McDavid? Oh, my God. Nah, I don't, I, I don't want to imagine that because they got a good fan base. And not, suck, but, yeah. not impossible. Let's go. Let's rifle through these. There's two more trades in this one. Um, so again, you're Edmonton. Uh, you're giving up a first round pick, or sorry, uh, you're getting a first round pick here from Dallas from uh, Matthias Ekholm. Ekholm is signed until 25-26. In the context of the other trades, I mean, if you're blowing it up, I'm yeah, dead. just yeah, do yeah, it, yeah. right? But but in the like in the real normal, world, in the real world, now definitely not getting out if I'm Edmonton. You're now the Leafs again in this trade, and now you're still the Oilers. You're getting Willie Nylander straight swap. Oh, not straight swap. You're getting William Nylander in a 2023 first round pick, uh, and you got to give up Nuge. Oh, I'm the Leafs. I'm not, not doing that. that. No. <laughs> I'd probably take that, but man, Nuge is also pretty good. Yeah, He's yeah. not a this year. Yeah, yeah. Best yeah. player Jesse's ever played against. Yeah, Jesse's played against a hundred point NHL player. Hey, dude, when you say That's it like great. that. <laughs> nice. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, Burn- Burnaby Winter Club tied them. <laughs> I like tied that. them. I like that claim because that's no longer a result you can oh. even have. Okay. Also, I want to say there's a team called a, a place called Sherwood Park. They're an absolute wagon. Like they just develop, 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 develop. Got this this guy named Duncan Siemens was drafted tenth overall by the Avalanche. Actually, Luca would know who he is. I got <laughs> rocked by him. But anyways, I was just, the next one's crazy. It's Columbus again. Man, some of these it. are just handpicked for it. for this conversation. Luca, they are. You picked the right hand-picked. day to not be here. The yeah. breakdown works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Columbus, you're getting Jake McCabe and Mitch Marner. In return, you're giving up Patty Line, Andrew Peak, and a third rounder uh, in 2023, and a third rounder in 2024. As the Leafs, no shot. Yeah, no, what the hell? <laughs> like, I thought I was going to read more here. You're like, we can go into the next one because you're, I mean, just There's, say it out loud. Uh, uh, yeah, I would do that if I was Columbus. <laughs> yeah. Because then I'd just be closer to Patty. It'd be one. I could hang with him here. Be, and can you imagine lying in with Matthews? Yeah. It'd be ridiculous. And would you finally, officially be a Leafs fan? Just for Patty. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Tiny <laughs> so, bit of me. Yeah. No, actually, I would think Patty was a traitor and I wouldn't talk to him anymore. That's not true. Kidding, That's so I'm not kidding, true. I'm yeah, but he kidding, can say it because it's not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And he could wear know. Willie's old number. 29. Oh, 29. I thought I was like, why would he switch to 88? But yeah. Okay, another outlandish one for the Oilers. I don't know. Actually, I just clicked on it, but it's called another crack at Pareko. I actually included this because the Oilers fans seem obsessed with trying to get Colton Pareko. Okay. They like this is a really okay. popular trade. He's target for them. the cog missing. Uh, so the first trade. Uh, they're giving up Warren Fogle for a fourth rounder. We're not even going to discuss that. <laughs> yeah, Yamamoto, see you later. <laughs> Third round pick, you're off to Philly in this scenario. And then yeah, finally, the, tr- the one actually worth mentioning, you're the Oilers still, and now you're the Blues, Corwin. Uh, the Blues, you're getting Broberg, Cody Cece, and a first round pick in 2024, but you got to give up Colton Pareko. Broberg was supposed to be really good, and if, if you think he can turn into something, I'm probably doing it as the Blues. Like, I think that's actually a decent return, especially because it feels like people are pretty down on Pareko. He didn't have a great year, and uh, he's still got a pretty big contract left. So as the Blues, I, I probably am doing that. They're, you know what? The Blues, they're retooling like, a bit. They're retooling. <laughs> I wouldn't call it re- – they're definitely not rebuilding, but, like, the Blues are a team that next year they could be competitive again. Yeah. They can make the playoffs next year. I would probably do that if I was Edmonton simply because I'm in win now mode and I just need to do anything I can to try to win while I have McDavid and Dry settle together. Especially because he's headed to Chicago for a straight swap. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Connor for Connors. Connor for Connors. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's go on to the next one for the Leafs. Okay. This one, there's two trades that kind of tie in together here. Uh, you're Columbus and Anaheim in this world. You're still what you're wearing. The Leafs. You're giving up. Mitch Marner, and you're giving up Austin Matthews. Two separate trades, though. The first trade, this is where Mitch Marner is, and he's going for Boone Jenner and the third overall pick 
in this year's draft. So you're Columbus here. And here's the second one. I'm just going to say it out loud. You're playing. You're wearing two hats, a third with the Winnipeg Ice. But so <laughs> the, Ducks, the Ducks are getting Austin Matthews in this realm. So you're, the Leafs are getting a second overall pick and the third overall pick, and they're giving up Marner and Matthews. Which, like, as the Leafs, I'm not doing it. No, that's no. – but guaranteed versus potential. Yeah, but it's an interesting conversation where, like, do if you and maybe there's some tweaks you make to that, you get a little more value, things like that. But what, like, what is the if if you're thinking that you can't win with the core or whatever, is there a better time to restart? Where like, okay, like, what if you grabbed, Fant- so you get Fantilli second overall, and then let's say you get Michkov and everything works out. That's two guys that are supposed to be pretty like. I don't want to say generational, but like franchise type players. And the I don't think this is going to okay. happen at all. Of course, but most of these. How do you <laughs> how do you trade Boone Jenner? <laughs> <laughs> that is the craziest inclusion. Like yeah, it must Boone have been just to make, to make the, the cap work. Yeah, yeah, that's my boy right there. Yeah. You can't trade that guy. I mean, you're the Blue Jackets GM in this scenario. Are you saying no because you might not have a job after that. <laughs> no, no. Actually, I, that's still I, be a tough. Call, y- you know what? I I would probably. You know what, though? Like, it is kind of confusing because obviously Marner is an amazing player. You're also... No. What? You're you're going to say no. Let, let him go down no, the no, path no, first. No, 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 no. I, I would do it. And maybe Columbus is closer to being good as it, as they're being given credit for. But, sure. like, the question is, you get a guy like Marner who knows if he's going to resign in Columbus. And, you know, it, it just depends. Like, do you want to get players that are going to help you be good now? Or do you want to help, like, these players that are in your system and yeah. let them grow and not commit too much money anywhere? And then just, like, I think you do do it because even with, like, Marner, Line, and Damn. Goudreau, you have all these young guys who are going to be really good behind them. And, and you still need, like, a big, a good core of, like, veteran players to lead you. But at the same time, like, yeah, it's like, sure, you're getting Marner. Well, it's, just, it's so tough because they already, they, they're they already kind of in on right now. Like, they, they're they paying Goudreau a lot. They're paying uh, Line. Patrick Laine quite a bit. Like, they do have some guys that they are, like, they're right, it is yeah. now. They're, they're, yeah, but, like, they have so many good Well, the prospects. weird thing is they don't yeah. really have centermen. They don't. And that's why even if you lose Boone, it's like, then what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> And then you and then you miss out on drafting a good center this year. Like they could draft a guy like Carlson. So everyone's saying no to that one then. And like everyone's saying no. And then the no, no, I, I, I'd probably do it if I was Columbus still. And the and other trade, you like, just move, maybe hey, flip some other stuff for Shifley. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe Line a, uh, comes back or Line a plays center. The other they trade, had him playing center a little last year. The other trade, you're clearly saying yes, just to directly getting Austin Matthews. But like again, to yeah, run, I, this I, whole scenario would be like if you think he can't sign for a certain amount, that'd yeah. be the only reason you. I, the craziest that. thing is, I can't believe a Leafs fan made this and was like second round, second overall pick. That's enough. I mean, we're taking See Matthews. We're taking our their word for it that they're a Leafs fan. Maybe they're. Yeah, they're, they're secretly Espionage. a Ducks fan, and they're just like, Matthew, maybe Dubis will read this. Matthews is going to sign with the lease. Okay, and the last one, our very last one here. This is clearly a joke. Uh, Holland Masterclass. Uh, you're still the Oilers. Oh, uh, You're the Flames, oh. and you're getting Cody CC. Additional details, any team. Uh, <laughs> doesn't matter who you are. And Edmonton is getting a sixth-round pick. <laughs> That's so the CC only move. Holland Masterclass. C- CC for a sixth? Yeah. And they didn't do any other And they other didn't do moves. any other thing. Nothing really off. Did they sign anyone? Did they, like in the UFAs or something? Like Evan Bouchard signs a deal. Sorry. They they retain Bouchard, McLeod, Clint Costin, and they bring in, oh, I guess this is part of it, uh, Justin Braun, Derek Ryan, Josh Lavo, and Brett Ritchie. Holland Masterclass. <laughs> didn't Justin Braun retire? <laughs> <laughs> they're like bring him out bring him back yeah let's move on we're gonna move on to don't think just tweet we're gonna start with you in this one all right and remember try to make compose tweet. a tweet yes out of this. yes screw the norris the top three defensemen currently in the nhl are and uh, of course the actual finalists were carlson fox and uh, makar screw the finalists the top three defensemen in the nhl still include two of the finalists and Adam Fox and Kel McCarr. The third best might just be Jacob Slavin. Okay. And just defense alone more than anything, I'm guessing. Is yeah. Just like He's for a stud. what you're supposed to do with the position. Okay. He's a complete horse. 
I was. Are you gonna you want one of your own? I think that's a great shout. I'd probably swap out Slavin for Heiskanen. I was gonna say Heiskanen. Yeah, true, true, true. true Heiskanen. True. Sorry, we Heiskanen continuously great. say his name wrong. Right? I believe it is Heiskanen. Heiskanen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? And the fact that I didn't man. even say him like just goes to show how over under it is. Yeah, because yeah. he's great defender and great at like he's been driving a play. Worse for them. He's like, great. like he's yeah. he's playing like thirty minute games and just I, I feel like. I'm, I'm sure we're probably going to get to it, but we, we got to give some credit to a lot of these conference finalists because, like, I can't believe the start. What, once the st- you'll, you'll bring us into this, by the okay, way, because okay. your tweet topic is on that. Yeah. The NHL should feel blank about the conference finals final four. The NHL probably doesn't feel much about the conference finalists. Not in that, like, I don't think they're like, yes! And I don't think they're like, this is a disaster. I think it's fine. Like, they, 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 like they're probably a little excited. Like, oh, it's cool that some like of the Vegas non-traditional markets. Sure. Yeah. Definitely love Vegas. And, but, like, and again, like, Carolina has a great fan base. Yeah. And, like, they're probably just like, yeah, it's cool that some of the non-traditional markets are in there. Probably won't get as great of TV numbers for some of the stuff, which is probably a bit of a bummer. But they, they're also looking to grow those markets. It, it's you know like, what, though? Sorry. Like, like, they're playing in the markets. Like, sure, hockey's not – huge there but they're massive places like yeah you're talking about texas that's like big cities. yeah you're talking about yeah. texas florida that's what i'm saying not yeah. small markets oh, yeah, just yeah, non-traditional yeah. markets no, no, i know but like the nhl is probably kind of happy as well because they maybe see it as an opportunity to like grow the game a little bit more in areas that are have huge populations that where hockey isn't that popular. I think that's always but, the operative word for them yeah. there where it's like, again, not as the perspective of a fan because like I get why people from Canada, particularly, they, they get upset at this and they have this idea in their head. They're like, ah, like, they don't care enough about these massive cities and these places in Canada that really care about it to another level. But as you said, like, they care about sustained growth and clearly having all of four of those places continue to love those teams. They probably do take for granted to some degree how much like fans in Canada just love the game period no matter what but still like you can see why that is still a win as you said like these are places they want to be interested in hockey yeah but uh, but I also would say like my whole thing the reason I'm saying like I think they're fine with it is I don't think this was like their dream match no exactly there's still like, better ones for that pick too yeah and yeah. and but I mean Seattle even to I'm be just, honest if they had made it to them I could see them preferring that to the Dallas one I think they would have yeah like like the Seattle especially what I was going to say is like you got to give some credit to some of these teams where like Dallas Vegas and Carolina have just been in and around like this level of competition just a bunch of the past couple years so like uh, you just kind of got to tip your cap you see teams (laughs) because we spend all our time talking about Toronto Edmonton the Jets and all this stuff and it's like Dallas has been in the Stanley Cup final. They've been to the conference final against the Vegan, Vegas Golden Knights that one time. And, like, and they bonus. do have some of the most exciting players, again, in Hintz and Heisken, and, like, and they don't get the same. Robertson. Robertson. And, and, Robertson and, and, like, yeah, and it's course. funny. They, they've really been able to – they're, they're kind of like the new Sharks where they've they've done this thing where they've kind of moved their the big guys that they had originally, like from Sagan and Ben and, and that, into like lesser roles that are still on the team and contributing. But um, they've just been able to – kind of just retool on the go maybe you have a couple down years in there but still just stay really competitive with some of the same stuff so i, I wonder again it, it, you start looking for for teams like edmonton and uh and toronto and i know kyle dubas spoke about it where he was like we need some of our own guys to start coming and filling out our roster like like the nick robertson matthew nyes like we need some of these other guys to come in and step, step up and be great role. players and like yeah. th- these gr- teams are great templates for well, that you've helped me transition to the next one favorite thing you heard from leaf's locker room clean out day before i tweet i just want to say i actually watched the entire thing all day because i was wor- i was working in and clipping it so i found it to be very interesting my favorite thing i heard from leaf's media day was kyle dubas being a human being because I thought I I think one thing we've learned about Kyle Dubas is that first of all I love him, despite my feelings towards the the least. He seems like a very likable guy. He, he's just a real dude. He feels emotion. If he th- wants to throw a water bottle, he'll throw a water bottle. If he wants to yell out loud in a press box, he'll he'll yell out loud. He he doesn't hide his emotions, and you could actually see when he was talking about his family, he was getting emotional. What I would say is that I'm I'm not gonna I I, I definitely don't have it in me to go anywhere else. So it'll either be here or it'll be taking time to recalibrate, reflect on the seasons here. But you won't see me next week pop up elsewhere. I don't, I can't, 
put them through that after this year. And you could see the toll that it took on him. And if I'm Kyle Dubas and this is actually a thing, I would think I would actually step away for a year if I was Kyle Dubas. And I would take a year to reevaluate what I need to do. If the Leafs wouldn't have you back is what you're saying there, right? Because if the Leafs would have him back, that guy's probably back in the like, job. Which no, no, just, I, no, look, look. In, in his thing, he says like... No, I know that. Where he said it's either the Leafs or I'm out next I, year. I know, I know that it's a dream situation. And there are things about Dubas and his family. They probably want to stay in Toronto. So there's probably added pressure for him to stay with Toronto. But he's talking about all this pressure. All of the stuff. All the toll that it takes on his family. Man, it's like you're the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. This pressure isn't going anywhere, and you're going to – nothing will change. It's going like, on there, nothing, nothing will change. No, I mean, like, I, I don't know. I, I just think it's easy to say, like, he should step away. We don't know anything about their his personal situation. And obviously, like you said, he's going to go – It's. I, I think the nice thing is it's going to be resolved quickly, it sounds like, because he said, he said, like, in the next couple of days, i got to talk to my family and say, like – Whatever, but like I don't know. I don't. I don't think we can just be like you should step away. Like I'm sure. Like I, just my it, opinion. Yeah, yeah it was just I my opinion. It's fair just, enough. Just, we don't know the details. You're right in saying that, but I also understand where it's like you're just saying it's a very pressure filled job, and you can see on the human level what it does. Yeah, I, think, well, I, I, I just like yeah. This is again. This is just my opinion. Sure. I could just like read. I felt like I had a decent read on how he was feeling during that, and like you could you could see like he was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders, and like. He has some tough to, like this is gonna be a hard off season for him. I think this is coming I, from the general manager of the Edmonton Oilers as well. Yeah, so don't forget that. I, I'm, I'm also I also think that like Sheldon Keefe sounded and looked very defeated yesterday, not just by the loss, but as if he kind of knows it's that it's like something. And when and when Dubis was asked about Keefe's future, the first thing that Dubis did, he just like we were not doing well in some areas, but then our coaching staff made adjustments and I would have been way more pissed off if we didn't make the adjustments. But it's like, that just sounded kind of like a bunch of to me. It sounds to me like Dubas knows that he's going to have to get rid of Keefe and that's probably weighing a lot on him too because they're so tight. And holy smokes, it's going to be an interesting offseason in Toronto. I Yeah, I would say I just hope the Leafs do everything they can to keep him because like I, I just think Dubis. that like Dubis. yeah like yeah. In, in my mind like again if if it has been hard on him find ways that you can create a better like like you know obviously I, I doubt he's saying like the Leafs have uh, from everything all of them say they say it's like a top tier organization and obviously he's a part of that but that they've they've all really enjoyed the culture there and stuff so I, but I just mean in terms of like whatever it is to keep him you keep him and also like if he stays and they're like okay you get another year you have to assume there are absolute like fireworks to some degree, no? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? You don't think he's the kind of guy where you, you know what? Like I, because obviously I get what you're saying. Where it's like he trusts what he's built still, and he thinks the odds will still be in his favor. But it's like you got one last crack at it in your head. Like maybe you do get a little drastic in some areas. You know what? I've given myself a chance, at the very least, to not say that I'm a fraud in wanting to go with this. But you know what? I can also change my mind. Because that's perfectly human as well. And maybe I will start shifting something around where once it was a principle that I wanted to keep things one way. So I don't really see. I know like people are referencing Florida as the team as like, oh, look, they made this big trade. But it was like they that's weren't. a pretty unique scenario. Well, not only that, well. they weren't the team that was in like the need to no, trade. Like they were Calgary the ones, needed, Calgary, yeah. that needed to trade. And then Florida came in and took advantage of that situation. Yeah. Like, And I think Kyle Dubas said himself, nothing's off the table. Like if he can improve the team, he'll improve the team. But I just don't. We just went through however many trades that these fans suggested, and pretty much every single one, we we're like, no, like that's not realistic. And and like I don't remember one that we even. And I know obviously I picked some of these, so it's like, okay, it's I don't know if all the trades but, like address the least yeah. main needs though. No, a lot of them were rebuilds more than anything. But um, I know, but I just I don't know. We, we throw around. I think like, we know where his mind is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right now, I'm I just think that like like because like I see what Corin's saying. It's yeah. like like the Leafs core is very good it's a strong like, it's, a, yes. it's a very strong core yeah. talent but, wise is a lot but like at what point do you realize like okay we've been to the playoffs five years in a row we've won one series i think it's seven seven sorry seven years in a row ever since matthews got drafted yeah. right so seven years in a row we've been there every year and like, we have won one guess, series at what point do we need to just look at ourselves and say it's time to change something. Yeah, let's change your mind. It'd be it'd be clearly the most interesting thing. Period. Obviously, if that's what happened, but whether or not it does, who knows? Well, you know what is happening? 
the end of this. Also, I loved what Nylander said. Look, I love it here. I don't want to be anywhere else. Um, and this is uh, where I want to win. And I want uh, us to give it a go uh, as long as we can. Like, what else are these guys supposed to say? Like, everyone in the Jets is uh, doing the same thing. Trip you know? booked, like, actually, right now. Can't see myself coming back. <laughs> just, someone just said that. Yeah, yeah, you know, I don't really want to be here. <laughs> just over. Just, yeah, like, yeah. all the Jets are saying, yeah, like, we want to run it back. Or, like, or, of course or, you do. There's a quick one of, the money's right. No, but I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, Matthews was definitely less yeah. committal. Like, he was like, my intention is to be here. I think, yeah, but we're not, I'm not, we're not making it at you, but in general, like, for real, though, in most scenarios, it's like, yeah, you're not really going to speak too, too genuinely, but yes, that one is funny. I don't, I'm and saying I don't want to be anywhere else is a way stronger statement, right? I don't think, I don't think any of these guys, like, act, like, really, at least right now, like, want to leave. I couldn't, I, I couldn't think yeah. of one, but uh, I can't think that we're done here. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. And we'll see you at some other point because we're that consistent. <laughs> Boone Jenner? You can't trade that guy. <laughs>